So I have a question. Why is this? I'm only starting now. <laughs> Sorry. The mic's only after coming on. So welcome to the house of God. And why is this the house of God this morning? What makes it the house of God? Anyone want to answer me? I love to answer, answer anyone. But because we're here, because we've carried the Holy Spirit with us, when we come here, the Holy Spirit comes with us. We're indwelt. Our bodies, our physical bodies are indwelt by the Holy Spirit. And this is how this becomes the house of God. It's a building, but it's the house of God and we're here because we are temples of the Holy Spirit. And coming together, there can be a special angel, if you like, I can call it, because in the book of Revelation, it talks about the angel of the church here, the angel of the church there. So we could say that an angel comes here with us, uh, or the presence of God through an angel, as well as the Holy Spirit, you know. So we just thank the Lord for your angel here this morning. Thank the Lord for your presence for ministry, for your presence for uh, fellowship, and for worship, and for thanksgiving, for hearing the word for uh, expressing love towards you and love towards each other. So we thank you for that, Lord, amidst all the comings and goings of life, amidst all the comings and goings of our, of our routines. We thank you for your presence that we're reminded of here sometimes because sometimes we forget about it in, during, the, during the week, during the day. But, Lord, you wash the dust from our feet and you remind us, I am here washing your feet. I have a picture of Jesus just washing our feet and welcoming us into the house of God. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for Victor and the, the rest of the worship team, the family. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Can we get up on our feet as we worship God? We serve an awesome God. Our God is faithful, our God is reliable. Our God is dependable. Do I have witness in the house? Come on, put your hands together and let's celebrate them this morning. God who saves us, the 
Since arise, oh God, we worship you. We lift you high. Father, we declare this morning there is none like you, God. We could search throughout the world, but Father, there is none like you. Give him praise. Magnify his name this morning. For he alone is worthy. For he alone is righteous. For he alone is dependable. He alone is trustworthy. Come on, give him praise. Bless him, magnify his name. Lord, you deserve all the glory today. For you are worthy. Lord, we worship you. God, we worship you. Lord, we lift you high. Lord, we love you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your compassion, Lord. And in Jesus' mighty name, we worship. Somebody put your hands together for Jesus. Okay, um, 
that's, we're going to have the preaching now. It's a bit different each week. So um, it's Noel Floodgate. And he's actually, he, he lives, he should be here, you know, because he lives in Belly Fairmouth. <laughs> so he's a local man. And his wife, you're very welcome today with us. And um, Noel is going to give a bit of his own uh, testimony. And uh, just, I just want to just come in, just stay in the presence of the Lord. That's me, just be, still be conscious of God's presence. Because we're in God's presence all the time, whether we know it or not. It's just to acknowledge it and to uh, make it part of our lives. So we just acknowledge you, Lord. We acknowledge your presence that's here, especially this morning, because there's a group of us. You have a special angel, or as I said in the prayer, this, or the welcome, a special presence in groups of people, or two or three are gathered. So we thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for your favor, Father, on each one here. Thank you for your plan for each one here, Lord. Your mighty plans. Abraham was one man. And the promise he received from God of his son is a very personal promise. It affected the history of the whole world, right down to our day. And like I have promises from God, and everyone here can receive promises from God or have them. They're built in, like they're built into our spirits. And it doesn't just affect us, it affects history, you know. It's, it's part of history, somebody said, his story, the story of Jesus. But it's the story of Jesus in us, through us, with us, uh, among us. Like as I said last week, I don't have, have even one shred of righteousness of my own. Not even the smallest little atom of righteousness of my own. I stand here in the righteousness of God himself that was in Jesus and that he's given to us. That's the righteousness we stand in. We never have our, if we try to have our own righteousness, it doesn't work. It just doesn't work because there's a fault line running through it. And there's a fault line of sin that we inherit and that we practice ourselves. Even unknown to ourselves, there's even unknown to it, but it's all forgiven. It's forgiven in Jesus. It's covered, covered by the blood, the price paid. The price has been paid. And now Noel is going to come and share with us. Amen. Well, the children, children can go up to the Sunday school with, with Abby. And... Uh, Amen. Uh, just to get started. Amen. We are there. Do you want to stand for the reading of the word? Amen. I want to turn your Bibles to. Uh, I will in a minute. Okay. Uh, um, Genesis uh, chapter 7. Turn your Bibles to that, please. Amen. When you get there, give us an amen. <coughs> we're going to read that. Uh, we're going to read all that chapter. Uh, amen. Okay. And the word of the Lord said, Then the Lord said to Noah, Come into the ark, you and all your household, because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. You shall take with you seven, each of every clean animal, a male and a female, to each, to each of animals that are unclean a male and a his female. Also seven each of the birds of the air, male and female, to keep the species alive in the face of all the earth. For after seven more days, I will cause it to rain on the earth. Forty days and forty nights, and I will destroy from the face of the earth all living things that I have made. And Noah did according to all the Lord commanded him. Noah was 600 years when he, the floodgates were on the earth. The flood water, so it was my name. So Noah and his sons, his wife and, and his son's wife went into the ark because of the waters of the flood. Of clean animals, of animals that are unclean, of birds and of everything that creeps on the earth. Two by two they went into the ark. They went into the ark to Noah, male and female, as God had commanded Noah. 
And it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were on the earth. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, and on the day all the fountains of the great deep were broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened, and the rain was on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. On the very same day, Noah and Noah's sons, Shem, Ham, Japheth, and Noah's wife and their three wives of their sons with them entered the ark. They and every beast after its kind, all cattle after its kind, every creeping thing that creeps on the earth after its kind, every bird after its kind, every, every, every bird of every sort. And they went into the ark to Noah, two by two, of all flesh, in which is the breath of life. So those that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. Now the floods were on the earth forty days, the waters increased and lifted up the ark, and it rose high on above the earth. The water prevailed and greatly increased on the earth, and the, and the ark moved above the surface of the waters, and the water prevailed exceedingly on the earth. And all the high hills under the whole heaven were covered. The water prevailed fifteen cubits upwards, and the mountains were covered. And all flesh died and moved on, that moved on the earth. Birds and cattle and beasts and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth and every man. All in whose nostril was the breath of the spirit of life. All that was on the dry land died. So he destroyed all living things which were on the face of the ground, both man and cattle. Creeping things, the birds of the air, they were destroyed from the earth. Only Noah and those who were with him in the ark remained alive. And the water prevailed on the earth 150 years. Oh Lord, we thank you for the word this morning. We thank you for your grace and mercy. We thank you, for Lord, for the privilege you give me, Lord, Father God, to come up here, Father God, and give your word, Lord, Father God. I pray, O oh Lord, Father God, that your spirit will move in a, a powerful way today, Father God. Father God, through your word, Lord, Father God. Father God, because we need it, Lord, Father God. We need your word inside us. <coughs> we need your Holy Spirit. Lord, we need you, Lord, Father God. Father God. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. I just want to say... Um, I am an no old floodgate. Uh, yeah. From Bally Farmer. Amen. Uh, I go to um, the church in Tala. It's a Neelam church in Tala. I go there. Pastor Shuey, he's my pastor. Uh, Neve, his wife, and their uh, son and daughter. Amen. Neve does the worship. Amen. Up there, and their family does the worship. Amen. I'm a blessed man to be able to go there. Amen. I know it's out of the way. I know uh, that uh, this church is a powerful church as well, but I'm truly blessed in any end to be up there. Amen. Uh, by the way, I'm, I'm a doorkeeper in the house of Tala. Amen. Hallelujah. And the Bible tells me I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than a hundred thousand days out there among the unlost. Amen. Amen. Well, I got saved in... Uh, 1999, that's three nines, there was an emergency, that's an emergency call, 999, hallelujah, I tell you, I needed that emergency call, hallelujah, when I went in that day down in uh, East Wall, amen, uh, I got in into the sanctuary, I was looking for someone, and I went in and I heard this, uh, I heard this worship, amen, and a young boy on the organ Flashing out the music, you know what I mean? And I said, I couldn't find out who he was looking for. But I tell you, you know what? I found God, amen. I found in the music. I found in the worship, amen. I knew this was for me. And I said, I'm coming back. And I've been coming back ever since, amen. Hallelujah. Serving God, amen. I've been here anyway, 
hand of you. Yeah, um, that's my wife, Mary, down there. Amen. Uh, we've been married 55 years. Uh, we were 55 years married last Friday. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Amen. Uh, well, yeah, we're doing good, ain't we, Mary? Hallelujah. But well, I'm doing good anyway. <laughs> 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank as well the leadership of uh, Elam Church here in Ballyferma for letting me come down, for having me down here uh, sharing God's word. Amen. Amen. And I want to thank the Lord for my salvation as well. Amen. So we just get on with the word now, I think. Amen. The introduction is uh, over. So the title of this uh, message is A New Beginning. Amen. Amen. That's what we all need. That's what we all have. Amen. Amen. Then the Lord said to Noah in chapter 1, Come into the ark, you and all your household, because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. Amen. And that's what the Lord does. Amen. He sees, he sees we're righteous. Amen. In this generation. And he tells us, come into the ark, amen. You and all your household, amen. And I know that there's families here, there's families represented, amen, here this morning. I know I'm representing my family this morning, and I know there's people representing their families this morning. And I know that their houses holds the ark is covered, amen. It's covered by the blood of Jesus, amen, this morning, amen. The families is covered, covered by the blood of Jesus, covered by the, you who are, who are representing your families here this morning, amen, amen. That's what, that's what it's all about. That's what makes it great as soon as the morning to be able to come down and be with people of the same, hallelujah, hallelujah, have the same mind and have the, have the same... Uh, what they want in life, hallelujah. That we want God in our life. That we want to be have peace in our lives. To get blessed in our lives. Our loved ones and our families. Amen. And that's what we are, Lord. We're all together. We're all, we're all one big happy family. Amen. Do I hear an amen? Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Family of God. And God changed us. Hallelujah. And we to take our, our children, hallelujah, in with us, amen. And I just want to say before I start, the, um, about Noah, that the, 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 I want to tell you about Noah, that Noah was a just man, perfect in his generation. That's in uh, chapter 6, verse 9. And Noah walked with God, Amen. And uh, this is Noah's family. Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Jephthah. And we see before that, that before uh, we, we talked about Noah and the ark, he said in, in chapter 6 of, of verse 6, uh, and the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping things and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. Twice, twice in that couple of scriptures, the Lord said he's sorry. He's sorry he made man. Hallelujah. And our God, our God, our creator, was sorry he made, he made us. Wow. What a thing for God to say about man, that he was sorry about that. That he was sorry that he made man because they were sinful. Them men were sinful. Them people were sinful. Hallelujah. Amen. But at that time, it's hard to believe that God would say something, that say something 
about, about, uh, about people, his own people. Because I remember Moses, when the people of Israel sinned against God, Moses intervened for them. Yeah. Hallelujah. He intervened, but there was no intervention here for the children, for the people of, of Noah. Amen. There was no intervention. But there was intervention because Moses, Moses had to speak to God and God listened. God listened, but he didn't listen this time. Because he only seen one man. He only seen one family that was righteous before him. Noah, he was the only one he's seen. So let God see your righteousness. Let God see your righteousness all the time. Every minute of the day. He said, we're to praise him. Give him all the glory. Amen. Amen. We're to praise him in everything we do. If we grew up in the morning, we're to give him all the glory. If we, we get into our car, we're to, if we go down the street, we're to praise him. And if, if, if we go on a journey, we're to praise him for the journey we're going on. And let God pray about him. Pray about that he protects you. That he protects you. And that's what happened to them people. They forgot. They forgot to praise God. They forgot God. They forgot God itself. Amen. And God was angry with them. God was angry and he was sorry. But how can you make God sorry? How could we ever think of making God sorry? Amen. It'd be a sorry day if we could do that. To make God sorry. But he said in verse 8 there, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. He found favor. He found grace. And you know what grace is? It's undeserved favor. Amen. Undeserved favor. Amen. But somehow, somehow Noah found grace. Amen. It's just not given to you. You have to find it. You have to find that grace. Amen. You have to find out where that grace is. Amen. Grace comes from God. Hallelujah. Amen. And the new beginning we see. And the Bible tells us there how they prepare the ark. How God told Noah to prepare the ark. He says in chapter 6, you shall make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark, cover it inside and outside with pitch. Amen. And the ark is to be 300 by 50 by 30 high cubits. And then that's translated into, into inches, not into centimeters, it says into inches. It was 450 foot long, 75 foot wide, and 45 foot high. Amen. Uh, the word ark means a box. Amen. An Egyptian word, which comes from the term, may be drawn from, which means a, a chest or a coffin. And the same term is used in the box in which the baby Moses was placed in the Nile. And that's in Exodus 2, verse 3. Amen. And he says, you shall make a window for the ark, and you shall finish it to a cubic, a cubit from above, and set the door of the ark on its side. And you shall make it with lower, second, and third decks. And this, in verse 22, the Bible says, this Noah did according to all that God commanded him. So he did. Amen. Yeah. You see, that ark, it was a box shape, like a coffin, it says there. It no front, like a ship. It no back, like a stern. From around the water. It was just floated to the top. And whatever God said, God made it. He made it float the way God wanted to float. Amen. Hallelujah. And it's the same for us and our families. Amen. Amen. 
Well, in our families, we're aware of our families. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When our side, when our families are with us, when we have God in our lives, when we have family, that's what God does. That's what God does. He grabs hold of us. He puts us all together. He puts us in an ark. Amen. And he just, Holy Spirit, will just let us flow. Amen. Because no matter what way we go, what journey we take, unless God is in it, we won't go the right way. There's only two ways to go. There's a right way and a wrong way. And holy God, I tell you, I've gone the wrong way loads of times. Amen. Because God wasn't with me. Because God wasn't, I didn't ask God to show me. Amen. Which of the roads to take. I didn't take counsel from God. Amen. I took counsel from myself. And who am I that the Lord of Lord, Lord and King of Kings, who am I to tell the Lord of Lord and King of Kings which way I should go? Amen. See, no simple obedience is recorded five times in this, in this story. In chapter 7 there, I'll just we go into where Moses is. His simple obedience. And it goes to simple obedience. Chapter 7, verse 9 tells us this. Amen. Two by two they went into the ark to Noah, male and female, as God had commanded Noah. Noah was in that position that God was speaking to him and telling him what to do. Amen. So everything had to go, everything was perfect. Everything was perfect. Amen. Because God said it to Noah. Amen. Chapter 7, verse 16 tells us, it's here, yeah. So all that entered, Male and female of all flesh went in as God had commanded him. That's Noah. And the Lord shut him in. Amen. Chapter 8. Go to chapter 8. Uh, verse 17 and 18. Amen. So Noah went out and his sons and his wife and his sons wives with him. Every animal, creeping thing, every bird that creeps on the earth according to their families went out of the ark. Amen. But before that in 15, that God spoke to Noah saying, get out of the ark. You and your wife and your sons and your sons wives with you. And bring out with you, every living thing of all flesh is with you. Boars and cattle, every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, so that they may abound on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah went out. Noah was obedient. Amen. God told him to get out of the ark. Get out of the ark. Amen. Get out of our comfort zone, he was telling Noah. Get out of your comfort zone. Go out to the streets. Go out and multiply. Amen. And be fruitful. Go out to the streets and get the lost and bound. The people that need you to hear about Jesus. About your testimony. How God saved you. About the word of God. What he's done in your life. Amen. Get out of your ark. Get out of your ark. Amen. And fill these empty seats. Amen. Fill them. Amen. Where you'll have to get a building, where you'll have to go up. Amen. Three stories. Amen. Like, like, like God said in the, about the ark. Three stories. Had a first, a lower, a middle, and a top deck. Three stories. And this church would be the same on a Sunday morning at 11.30. Amen. Amen. This church will be the same. It won't never be the same. If we can just get out of our comfort zone and get out and tell the people out there. Amen. In Ballyfermland and beyond. That we're to go and multiply. Amen. 
So Noah went out with his sons and his wife, and his sons' wives with him. Amen. You see, the waters prevailed against the ark when they were in it. Chapter 18, 20 to 24 says, uh, the, the waters prevailed against the ark. As cordon as the waters came up, as cordon as they came up, the waters prevailed against them. And as the water came up, the ark went up, and the waters prevailed against it. And it went up some more, the waters prevailed against it. And it got to the, the window, the waters prevailed against it. Amen. But it didn't get in, cause, because, you know, the ark was a solid safe. Amen. That's in 717. Amen. And when the Lord in 716 tell them to shut him in, when the Lord shut him in, the Lord who has drawn them now closed the door on them. That shut door was a symbol of closure. Amen. Safety and God's deliverance is the same for us here. When we're in here, when we're in our families, it's a, we're closed in. We're safe. Amen. We're safe in here. Amen. We're hearing the, the word of God. We're hearing God's word. Amen. And no word that's not of God can get in because we're safe. Amen. And God's deliverance. When we're here, we're delivered. God delivered us. Amen. That's the new beginning. Amen. I want to speak about the people now. The people that was left out, outside. Amen. They missed the new beginning. Amen. Because they didn't know what. If you turn your Bibles to the Psalms, the book of Psalms, Psalm 19. I'm excited this morning. Are you excited? Amen. I'm excited. The word of the God excites me. Amen. This is what the this this is exactly what the people missed. Amen. The people that were outside the ark. This is what they couldn't see. And in Psalm 19, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament show his handiwork. Day unto day utter speech. And night unto night reveals knowledge. There is no speech nor language where the voice is not heard. The line has gone out through all the earth, and the words to the end of the and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tabernacle for the sun, in which which is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoices like a strong man to run his race. It's rising from one end of the heavens and it's circuit to the other end, and there is nothing hidden from its heat. Amen. Hallelujah. And we see that. We see that in the stars. This is, that's what the Psalm 19 is talking about, the moon and the sun. Amen. And lately you've been looking, if you look that way, a sundown. Isn't God painting a lovely picture on the sundown? Hallelujah. Amen. I've seen it there. The weather's so good when there's no much cloud around. It's been beautiful. The colors and all are wonderful. Because they missed out on, on the law of the Lord. Amen. They missed out on the testimony of the Lord. Amen. They missed out on the statutes of the Lord. They missed out on the commandments of the Lord. They missed out on the fear of the Lord. They missed out on the judgment of the Lord. And hallelujah. Because they're all to be desired, the Bible tells us. Then gold. Amen. Yeah, then much fine gold. Sweeter than honey and the honeycomb. Most ever your servants want to keep in him, there was great reward. Who can understand his errors? Clean me from secret faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and I shall have be innocent of a great transgression. Amen. 
And let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Remember that song? Let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, tonight. Hello, today, amen, hallelujah. Remember that song years ago? Hallelujah. I don't know who, I can't think of who it was, amen. Oh, they had the rivers of Babylon, that's it, amen. Yeah, amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, come on, because they, they, they wanted them to sing, didn't they? They wanted them to sing, but their hearts wasn't in it, amen. Amen. Because they were in a strange land, amen. But you know what, through it all, God has been good to us, Lord. Hallelujah. He's been very good to us, Lord. And we see there that in, in, uh, in uh, Psalm 19, verse 7, the law of the Lord, it's perfect, it says, converts, converting the soul. Amen. That's the fourth five verse, the fourth five, uh, fourth five books of the Old Testament. That's the law of the Lord. And when you read that, it's perfect. It'll convert your soul. Hallelujah. You'll never be the same again. Hallelujah. And the testimony of the Lord is sure. Make him wise the simple. And the testimony is ordinances. It's God's standard of conduct according to the Ten Commandments. And that's what they missed out on. They missed out on the standard of conduct because they, they lost the standard of conduct. Amen. They lost that. They forgot about it. Amen. And that's why God... Um, and there is something else they, they, they missed out. The statues of the Lord are right, rejoice in the heart. These are the things inscribed, inscribed, enacted laws. Amen. Statues. Statues, amen. Just like statues, the thing that they're imprinted, amen. They stick out, Amen. And they, the Bible tells us they're right. And they rejoice in their heart. That your heart is glad, amen, because of this, what the statues have done for your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Forward, forward there, the, the commandments of the Lord is pure, enlightening, uh, enlightening the eyes. Amen. It's pure. We see a lot of things now is not pure. But God's word is pure. Amen. We see a lot of things is, uh, is uh, duplicated. We see, uh, um, especially, uh, take flowers, take the rose. You take a rose, and man, and if you get a, a, a good rose, it's the smell is gorgeous. It's beautiful, amen. And it's attracted by the bees and all, because the bees get that in. But I tell you, but we try to duplicate that, and it's been done many a time. It's, there's no smell. There's no smell off it. There's no aroma off it. There's nothing off it. Only it looks good. It looks good, but it's like the word of the Lord. It's good, but if you look at it, if you really get down to it, it's false. Amen. It's false. And that's what they missed out on. The pure, the pure word. Amen. They missed out on the commandments. Hallelujah. That's what they missed out on. But that's what we have. Amen. And it says, the fear of the Lord is clean and enduring forever. And the fear of the Lord, it says in Proverbs 9, Proverbs 9, 10, it's the beginning of wisdom. So they hadn't got wisdom. They never had wisdom. Amen. They lost out on that. Not like us. We have wisdom. Amen. That's the, big, the fear we have, the fear of the Lord. And the, the, the judgments, he says. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. And, the, and, that, and that's him. The Bible tells us that. A binding law, a judicial decision. Not our decision to judge anyone. It's God's decision. It's we've got to give it to him. Because the Bible tells us, don't look at the spirit plank in your eye before you look at the speck in your neighbor's eye. Amen. And that's what the judgment, that's what the judgment is. It stops us from judging other people because 
Who's to be judged in him? Because our Lord is a great judge in him. So I'm going to finish up with that. Amen. Amen. And the new beginning, amen, that we have from the Lord. Amen. And just when the, if you want to stand up, I'll, I'll, um, I'll finish up. Amen. If you can close your eyes, bow your head. Amen. And we see what the Holy Spirit has for us today. Oh, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your word. That Noah was perfect. He was right in everything he did, Lord, Father God. And he found favor. He found favor with us, Lord. He found favor with you, Lord. Sorry. Amen. So it's for us too. Amen. We have to find favor with the Lord. Hallelujah. So our families, our loved ones, will be brought into the ark. Amen. We'll be brought into the covering. That's obedience. That's come from obedience that Noah was obedient. Amen. And the same we see the Lord Jesus. That he was obedient. Amen. He is obedient to his Father. Amen. He went to the cross for us. Amen. He says, the Bible tells us, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever would believe in him will never perish. Amen. Like the people in Noah's time that perished, amen. We'll never perish, amen. The Bible tells us that God has a plan for us, amen. He's a future and he has a belonging for us, Lord. That's what Jesus did for us that day he died. Amen. He made a way for us where there was no way. Amen. He made that way for us. Amen. And what a way. What a road we're on. Hallelujah. We're not on a road. We're on a highway. Hallelujah. We're on a highway. Amen. And we're going somewhere. We have, a, we, we, we have a future. We have a destiny. And we have a belonging. Hallelujah. Isn't that worth saying? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. For all that Jesus went through. Amen. And he didn't deserve it. He didn't deserve one thing. Amen. But he did it for us. He did it for me and you 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 so that we'd have a great life amen so our families would have a great life amen hallelujah it don't matter it don't matter if your family is torn up at the minute but that don't matter god has a future for them amen it's you. We have kept them under the covering, Lord Father God. We have put them in the ark, Lord Father God. Father God, and God has shut that door on our ark and our families, and He's kept us. Amen. He's keeping us safe. Amen. Because He knows He has a future for our loved ones. Amen. Even though we can't see it, we have to have faith to believe that God has a future for our families that we can see but God can see and that's our future we have to believe in and that's our faith Amen. that's our faith that keeps us going to all the storms to all the madness in our lives to all our doubts and fears Amen. to 
well, what the enemy wants to throw at us. Amen. The kitchen sink sometimes it feels like he throws at us. He throws everything at us, Lord Father God. Amen. But that's just a storm. That's just to get our attention. Amen. But you know what? He gets our attention. Amen. And we come back and we tell the Lord Father God. I know you're not sorry, Lord Father God, for saving me. Lord Father God I know you look down with favour on me Lord Father God Father thank you Lord thank you Lord for dying sending your only begotten son down to die for my sins Lord Father God and then he, you died on the cross Jesus died on the cross hallelujah for I, and he said it is finished he said to the Father is finished. He was obedient to the last. Amen. And then, and then, he was in the tomb and after three days, he went back. He went back to be seated for the Father. And that's for us. Amen. That's a blueprint for our lives. Hallelujah. And if, if we obey, hallelujah, if we obey, obey the voice of the Lord, hallelujah, if we obey his word, hallelujah, that's for us to go, to go. Our future, amen. Our future is to die and be resurrected, hallelujah. And be up, seated beside the Father, hallelujah. Seated because he has a mansion for us, he tells us, hallelujah. Amen. So we thank you, Lord, for this morning. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for all you're doing in your life. We love you. We give you all the glory and all the praise and honor in Jesus' name. And all the church says, Amen. Amen. When the music fades, all of sin, and I simply
voice and say, it's all, it's, it's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about about her. You are the reason why we gather here right now. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Face up the face of These are the days of righteousness be And these are the days of good trial Of firming the darkness as well Still where the voice in the desert crying Prepare the ways of the lost and the holy God Rise and come and Shining like the sun At the trumpet come around the Lord's table uh, to have the communion. Can I ask the ushers to start serving, please? Um, today, I, you know, when I was asked yesterday, quite late uh, yesterday, that, you know, I'll be taking communion, I was just thinking, what am I going to say? I didn't get prepared or anything. But one thing came to my mind, um, because the Lord's Supper, when we look at the history of Jesus throughout his time, you know, in the Bible, he dined a lot with, you know, with his disciples, with people. He sits at the table, he breaks bread, he drank with them. And that just got me thinking, I know we're all going through difficult times. And in the next couple of weeks and months ahead, it's even going to be very much difficult with the issue around electricity, gas, you know, petrol being expensive. You, food hike, inflation, and all that. But one thing the Lord laid in my heart is that we as Christians, we as children of God, we will not be found wanting. He will actually bless us. He will bless and provide for us. There are times, you know, even there is a saying in my language that there is no one that can actually say the Lord has not blessed them. It's those that would say theirs is not enough. And that's every one of us because we're always wanting more. We're always looking for more. The Lord has blessed each and every one of us. But we're always looking for more. And one thing the Lord laid in my heart is that in the, next, in the coming days, weeks, and months, especially coming to this winter, Look out for your brothers and sisters. Look out for your neighbors. I know things are difficult, but if it's one bag, you know, box of cereal, oh, they're doing buy one, get one free. Hello, neighbor. I saw this in the shop. I know you, your kids will like this. Here is a box. There are things you can do, practical things you can do to support your neighbors, to support families, to support friends, to support loved ones. Do not forget, because we can get into that situation whereby we're saying to ourselves, oh, I don't have enough also. I haven't paid my bills. I haven't done this and I haven't done that. But the Lord says it's in the giving that he blesses. So when you open your hand, to give out to somebody, then your palm is ready to receive from the Lord. I just want to encourage you at this point that 
just keep an eye out. You don't have, it doesn't have to be financial. It doesn't have to be material things. It can even be a service, you know, to somebody doing something good, doing something nice for somebody, for your neighbors, for your friends, for your work colleague. Do not go into this coming weeks and months saying, oh, sure, I'm feeling the same thing. I'm doing, you know, just going with the flow with the rest of society. Because we are special. We are God's children. And when we bless others, he blesses us. And that's when we're able to minister unto people and to bring people into Christ's kingdom. So I just want you to have that and, you know, remember that. Take that home that in the next coming months, yes, things are going to be difficult. But we know we do have Christ. And do not forget the little things to do for your loved ones and for your neighbors. So I'll read 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 26. For I received from the Lord, which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night, on the same night which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, broke it, and said, Take, eat this, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Can we all eat the bread? In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Can we all drink? For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until it comes. May the Lord bless you all and may the Lord lay in your heart the generous heart to look out for one another and to look out for your brethren and your loved ones and your neighbors. Have a blessed week. These are the days of Elijah declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of your silent Moses righteousness. And there is a days of the kind of firming the darkness as well. Still with the voice in the desert cry, preparing the ways of the Lord. Oh, the God, rising up the night, shining like the sun, at the drop and cold, being so us in the year of Jubilee, at the sight of Just look like Jehovah. 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 Just look like Jehovah.
Science here, the salvation comes. That's the temple of the Lord. We are that temple. So out of our bellies shall flow rivers of living water, as the Lord said. Amen. Now we have a presentation from Maya, or, or sorry, <laughs> uh, to do with vision school. And uh, what's your name? Emma. Emma. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, so my name is Emma, uh, and I am coming from a Romanian community, um, from a Romanian church, and I recently, this springtime, I took um, vision school training. Uh, by the way, I apologize for my broken English. I'm lacking of loads of words. Um, I only came here four, four years ago, so I'm, I'm still learning. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, Okay, so um, before we um, present to Vision School, I'd like to share a little bit about my testimony. I will try to make um, this long story really short. So I grew up as, a, like, uh, my father was a pastor in a um, village church. And um, being a, pa a pastor kid, um, I had all these rules and everything has to be done for the sake of the community and for the sake of the ministry. So I had ro loads of rules over um, in my life and my brothers, we, we all lived um, led and living under, under loads of um, don't do this, you have to do this, you don't have to do this. Also, um, yeah, it was a very traditional kind of um, a church. So there were loads of things that I had to do without understanding why. So um, while I grew up, I kind of started to hate the church. I, ha I started to hate God because I had all these liberties taken because of the sake of the church, of the sake of those people, brothers and sisters of mine who... Um, believe that the right way to serve God is in a certain way. So also uh, being a, I don't know how it's here, but being a um, pastor kid, you, usually the pastors in our community would be poor because they are full-time ministering, uh, like serving the people, and they wouldn't uh, kind, like they wouldn't have time to have another job. They would only can afford to have a part-time job. So we were also a large family with a very small income. So We've been mocked a lot for our faith. We've been mocked, m me and my brothers, for, for our belief. We've been mocked for um, the fact that we were poor. So I grew up and I had this resentment towards God. Like, why is this happening? If we are serving you, if we are doing the right thing, why w all what we get back is like um, hatred and why we are all, all the time mocked? Why don't we have, you know, like everybody else enough to like for example i had to wear my brothers and sister clothes like three four generations like um before me like um four brothers of mine would have wore the same clothes and i was so angry and bitter towards god so one day when i went to church my dad was uh, talking about how uh, god revealed himself to um, the people in the middle east and how god is like um appears to them in dreams and vision because is in Islam like the only way they would it's very important they believe uh, that God can talk to them through dreams so I was like okay God well then 
I was so ready to give up on my faith. I was so ready to turn my back on Jesus and like, I'm not following this. This is not like, this is not all right. So um, I said one evening, I, I, I like, I started to become really depressed and angry as a person, as an um, adolescent. And one day when I came to church and I heard my dad saying this, I was like, okay, then if you reveal yourself to people like this, me who have always been in church and have always needed the right things so the other people can be happy, then why don't you reveal yourself to me? So if you're real, then you're going to have to reveal yourself to me in the way you do for the people in the Middle East. And a few months later, Jesus did. He appeared to me in a dream. And from that moment on, I was like, whoa, like I realized I'm such a sinful person. Like I realized that God is so holy and no matter how much good I try to do, he is always like the difference between me and him is not going to be ever um, resolved by anything else but Jesus. So, yes, um, that moment I kind of like start to take my life seriously and like give a thought about, okay, Jesus is real. Um, but I still didn't, didn't, like, I still didn't commit myself to really serve Jesus, to really serve God. And... Um, I went to college and I was like, okay, this is my time when I'm going to make my decisions without having the church involving my life, without having my dad and my mom saying to me what I have to do and what I don't have to do. So um, for a while I stopped going, like I stopped, I stopped going to church. Uh, my friends realized even though Jesus already revealed himself to me, I still did not like um, wanted to fully follow him because there were like a lot of hatred and resentment still in my heart that was like not healed a lot of hurt as a child from from other people that was were, were there and I was like um, I couldn't see God I couldn't commit myself to follow him while those things were still there so my friends they come and start dragging me to church and I was like look if you would have been happy we, we would have left you alone but you are not happy you're just depressed and depressed and you're just not looking okay so they brought me back to church and every time the church would finish i would just keep out the door trying to get back to my room and lock the door and just be alone again but it would be like no this time you just see that girl you go and talk to her next time you see that person she's alone also you go and talk, talk to that person so they challenged me over and over again to the point that um interacting with them um, I realized that there is a community full of people that love God and love people so I kind of start to be drawn to them and um, after after some time um, I started to dare like to to have courage and asking God for different things and I realized well after I took college and I start working I realized how much fear anxiety uh, social anxiety and fear of people I had so I start praying against these fears and soon after I started praying, God brought somebody in our town that uh, had a conference exactly on the topic of fear. She actually had a book written on, on that topic. And I realized how God was like, uh, God is listening to my prayers. I mean, I've never been that person. Like, I never had a dedicated heart. I never, like, even though he revealed himself to me, I never really follow him. And still, whenever I ask something, he, like, makes sure that in a way or other, he would answer my prayers. So I got like, I was like, wow, I can't believe how personal God can be. Uh, like he would like listen to me in such a personal, like nobody knew about this, but just me and him. So um, I was, I started to be more drawn to like God and his word and uh, church and all that kind of thing. So I then moved here to Ireland and the community here, Romanian community, my church was like a very strong church and God like start to clean my character and to to build like uh, uh, like a renew my mind and the way I see him and the way I approach people and he started to set me free from my anger from my traumas from from my hurt in the experience uh, growing up and yes um, when this group uh, history makers like the guys with vision school came to our church I was like had I had my own plans in my mind I was like okay next year I want to go to psychotherapy like counseling to do a course of counseling I would like to like go to holiday in Croatia 
Uh, so when they came to us, I was just uh, like, yeah, this is not for me. I already know how hunger feels. I already know how it's to be poor. I, all the time when I imagined I heard the word mission, I thought about Africa. And I had already friends that went to mission. So I was like, no, that's enough. I, I, I mean, I, this is not for me. I already know how it is not to have things. So I'm not going to go back to that. And when they came, I just literally like um, kind of... Um, skipped the whole thing, I went back home and I was like, God, you know, I love you, but I will love you here from like from Ireland. But um, last autumn, God like keep telling me about the nations, keep telling me about his desire for people to be saved. And um, it, I'm actually going to read this verse from Roman chapter 10, verse 14 it says this, but how can they call on him to him to save them unless they believe in him and how can they believe in him if they have not heard about him and how can they hear, hear about him unless someone tell someone tells them and how will anyone go and tell them without being sent this is why the scripture says how beautiful are the feet of the messengers who bring good news so yeah when god was keep telling me about um, the nations i was like I never had a desire to be a missionary. I never had a desire like to share the gospel. As a matter of fact, my friend has uh, this verse on the wall and my roommate, she has this verse on the, uh, on the wall and he says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it's the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. And I never had this desire because to share the gospel. So every time I would come home and God would open opportunity for me to share the gospel, I would just zip it. So then when I come home and I see that verse, it was like a thorn in my eyes. I was like, I just start to like to ask for forgiveness for not having the courage to share the gospel with people and kept it all for myself. So that was there for two years. And every time I start to cry before God, because I knew as a follower of Jesus, it is my uh, responsibility to share the good news with other people is not this is like the good news is not something you keep for yourself it's the the word of salvation so i was supposed to give this to other people so other people to be saved as well so i felt guilty for not having the courage and i start to ask god if you really want me to do this then you have to take this fear away then you have to give me the boldness i don't have any of that so I ended up going to vision school very, like I was the last one to sign up for the course. And I was like very, very skeptical about this whole thing. And while I took that, I realized that God was pursuing me in actually going and sharing the gospel in the nations. And I, I was convicted that um, this salvation is not something that God invented for just for us after we die. It's something that we start living from now by actually sharing like okay i have this good news and i'm actually gonna i'm i love you so i'm just because i love you i want you to be safe so i'm gonna start sharing this so during vision school god transformed my mind and my heart so i started to pray really hard and um, against the fear and anxiety i want i went home desperately and i started praying and i was like god if you want me to do this, then you're going to have to take this anxiety and fear of people like I can't do this otherwise. So one evening under the guidance of, of another person, I really believed that God will send me free. So while I was praying, I had this um, image of a demon sa sitting right beside me. And until then, I always I thought that my fear is only um, emotional thing. It's something that can be solved only with counseling, which... I, I took in consideration and I, I asked for help, but then like while praying, I realized it was, it was more than an emotional issue. It was like a spiritual battle. It was like Satan fighting against me and stopping me from sharing the words of God. So then that was like the moment I realized that God, if he showed me this image of a demon, like who's fighting against me, then he definitely will do something in my life. And next day was the funniest thing because I went to work and I uh, work as a dental nurse, so I had this dentist that whenever I work with him, he just it, it gives me so much anxiety, like my stomach becomes so small and it feels like my heart is moving somewhere in my neck. So I was so anxious every time I would work with this man. So, But this time I just went there and I was like, so 
Like, what's the crack? Like, I'm, I know who I am. I'm a daughter of God, and I will do very well. Like, I, I didn't fear that man in that moment. So from that moment on, I, um, one of the things that I had to do was to share the gospel first here in Dublin before going into the nation. So I went with um, the staff members and all the guys who were training for to go into nations. And I've been in the streets and never in my life had I had so much joy sharing the gospel. Like I've been so happy being like talking about Jesus and what, what he did in my life and who he is was the greatest joy that I, I've ever experienced. And I was like, I don't understand like what happened because before I was ashamed of him, but now it feels like the greatest thing that I could ever do. So after this, I was like, that's it, I'm going to Jordan. Like I feel like God gave me the boldness, gave me the strength, like convicted me uh, about this. So I went to Jordan. And when I went to Jordan again, it was so surprising because we were, by the way, vision school, it's for all generation. I had a team made of seven people. Uh, there were three girls in their 20s. There were two boys in their 20s and there are two men in their 60s. So I just seen like the way, even the way God like set us like as, as team. And um, we went on the streets and I didn't expect me to be, when I, before I went there, I was like, God, how can I, like, how can I possibly help those people? Like, I never got prepared in sharing the gospel. I never got, like, I don't know how can I possibly be useful for this ministry. Looking at myself, looking at my fears, looking at my character, like, knowing that somebody might reject me, I'll just turn and walk away. I'm never going to see you again. And knowing that some people will not be open for gospel, I was like, what if somebody would reject me? Well, I'll be just, I don't know, start crying in the middle of the street. Like, this can't happen. And I've been worried about how uh, how will I react to everything that is going to be in the ministry uh, while in Jordan. So it was so interesting because I had a tree. We were a team of three. And everybody had a different, like, the way the gospel, like, the way um, um, the Bible describes, like, the body is like somebody's a hand, somebody's a mouth, somebody's a ear. Like everybody brings something different. And I realized I needed, like I would have never been able to do um, this ministry, like sharing the gospel without my teammates. Everybody was bringing something different. So I needed them so much, but we became like a mirror for each other. We would, while we were ministering and we'd help each other, we kind of start to see each other uh, weaknesses and, you know, like, Things that seems to be like we kind of look at them like, oh, this is acceptable. And we, those things and those kind of um, situation kind of stop the ministry from time to time. So we had to repent over and over again and like um, to push away this ego, uh, this me aside. And it's like for the glory of God, I'm just going to deny myself and I'm just going to say sorry to this person and go to the next person to share the gospel. So when I seen myself doing all this stuff that I would not normally, I was like, Emma, I would not do this. This is not something that, that, that I would normally do. This is something that the Lord worked in my life. And while talking to people, I had this lady that she was trying to convert me to Islam. And while talking to her, she used, we were struggling so much. How can we share the gospel with these people? Because not everybody was understanding English. So we knew only a few words in Arabic. We only knew a few. Uh, we had Google Translate. And it was really complicated sometimes to transmit the full message of the gospel. So this lady came in the house, and she, was, she knew that we are Christians. So she used Google Translate with a uh, microphone. So she literally was the answer to our prayers because we didn't know how to share the gospel. But she came, and she started to tell us that we are going to go to hell, and uh, we... if the only way to heaven is through Islam. So in that moment, using Google Translate with microphone, I started to share about the, about gospel. I, sh I started to share the gospel and I started to share my testimony. And the whole house heard the, the, the good news. It wasn't only the lady I was talking to, the, the whole house. So I just seen the way God opened a door for us. I was like, we've been struggling, but he threw that lady that tried to stop us and try to point out po point out um, that we are going to go we are going to go to hell God actually used that as an opportunity for us to share the gospel so 
Yeah, uh, the funny thing was that it was only always me and my teammate in between my teammates. It was always me, the person that would share the gospel. Everybody like would, would be like introducing using Arabic and all that. But when it comes to share the gospel, it was me. So for me, it was like, how in the world, like among all the things, I would not have expected that among these old people, m me to be the person that would share the gospel because I was so ashamed. I was so fearful to do this. And yes, um, it's all by God's grace, and um, um, it's 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 nothing. It's nothing related to oh, um, I know I'm ready. I'm I'm not ready. I didn't have the heart. I didn't have anything. Uh, as you see, my English is like lack. I'm lacking loads of words. But through God's grace, when you God finds an open heart, He will do anything. Yeah, Mayan. And when I took vision school, it really changed my heart and it broke my heart. My heart broke for unreached people groups. I always tell people before vision school, I didn't know what God spent his time thinking about or what he is doing. God really showed me how little I knew about him. I saw and I experienced that but God is bigger than I thought. The church is bigger than I thought. The church is meant to go out and preach this gospel to all the nations. Without understanding God's vision, we can't truly serve the church uh, in a way that is effective to complete the task that God has already prepared. My life is a lot different than before. I see God's heart. I see what He wants. My heart breaks for things that wouldn't have mattered to me before. It changes your perspective on everything. Your whole global vision for how you see the loss. A vision school really changed my entire paradigm of how I saw myself, uh, what it means to live as a Christian, what it means to live in uh, the times that we live in today. This is the way to revival. God wants to send workers out so that the church in America will experience revival. You will learn about God's love for the nations, but through this, you will know how much God loves you. Love of the Father. He just opened my heart. Life-changing point. God has a vision. God has a dream. That's the great commission. Wherever He goes, I will go. And that is how I love Him. It's a place of joy. Amen. Amen. So uh, our sister Emma came to share about uh, her testimony, her time uh, taking vision school and uh, what it was like for her when she went to go in obedience to serve the nation of Jordan. And today, the reason why we're here is because the Lord wants to extend um, his great call and his love to BCC. Amen. Amen. From this church, the Lord really wants to open our eyes and awaken us to his heart. You know, I, I've, I was thinking today, even during the message time, that it's really true. Like, God has a future and a plan for his church, right? Our lives are not empty like the world. Like, we are not called to live for a good life here, our best life here. But rather, God has called us as his servants to partake in building up his kingdom. Um, but, you know, the enemy and the kingdom of darkness, they know this, so they want to stop us. They will allow us to have every success in this world, every enjoyable thing, every pleasure, every good thing in this world, but for us to not understand the task that God has given us in these times, and particularly for our generation in these end times. Uh, so the word of God says in Matthew 24, 14, and this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed as a testimony to all nations and then the end will come. So this is what the Lord is waiting for. He is waiting for all nations to hear of his gospel. And this is why through Vision School, we particularly speak about unreached nations. Um, unreached nations, uh, actually, if we go to the next slide. Oh, yeah, these are just... If we go next slide, next slide, next slide, like the one where it actually has the first information slide about vision school. So we've had different seasons of vision school in Ireland and we are mobilizing the churches of Ireland because we really believe that God 
God, uh, Ireland is the arm of God. Amen? We are not just some, you know, like in, in history, Ireland is not just like some poor nation that is unusable by God, but God brought the gospel to this land because he loves this land and he desires to use the church of this land. And so he wants to remind us of this calling and he wants to strengthen us. And so what is Vision School? Vision School is a mission training program. It will challenge your worldview as a Christian as a believer and empower you to live a gospel-driven lifestyle and enable you to take the first step in serving the unreached nations. And so after this seven weeks um, training program, there is a time to, there's an opportunity rather to be able to go just like Emma went to Jordan, to go to Egypt. There was a sister that called me from BCC, uh, Pastor uh, Pastor Craig called me and said, there's someone in my church that wants to go to Turkey. How can she go to Turkey? I'm not sure if she's here today, but oh, praise the Lord. Can you remind me your name again? Caroline, Caroline, yes, we spoke on the phone. Caroline and I spoke on the phone, and I said, Caroline, yes, we will send you to Turkey, but we need to send a BCC team. There needs to be other brothers and sisters that will take vision school and also go with you. And so uh, when we talk about um, this area of the world, we talk about an impossibility for people ever in their lives to hear the gospel, ever in their lives. In Ireland, God is blessing this land so much. If you, I'm not Irish originally, of course. Um, but um, God has brought in so many Christians and believers of different ethnicities. Why in this land? Because he loves this land. Does he just want to save us so we can be saved? No. He says, Abraham, I will bless you so that you can be a blessing to all nations. The blessings of the Lord is for us to serve all nations. And so next slide. Um, The training topics, what actually happens in vision school? What do we speak about? We talk about God's vision, not, the first week is not my vision for my life, not my plan for my life, but God's vision and God's plan. And then we talk about what does it mean for a nation to be unreached, for a people group to be unreached. We look at like understanding Islam. We know this is one in every three, one in every four people in this world is are Muslims. So it's very important that we understand why the enemy has created this faith, this religion, to counter the cross of Jesus Christ. We must understand that as believers, as servants in the kingdom of God. And we talk about so many different things. Uh, One more important thing I want to point out that we speak about is the times that we live in and the Antichrist system. This is so important to be awake to and understand um, because the enemy has a system in which that he wants to rebel against God and the coming king, the coming kingdom of our God. Amen. And so next slide. Uh, who is Vision School for? This is so important because I would, be the, I would have been the very first person to, to discount myself from taking Vision School. Oh, I'm too young. Oh, I'm like, listen, I've never met an African missionary in my life. It's impossible. Or I'm a female. What could God use, you know? Or I could never think about going to this area of the world. But who is Vision School for? Vision School is for anyone, anyone that is interested or committed to world mission, meaning anyone who is interested in knowing the heart of our Father, the deep heart and longing of our Father. Vision School is uh, for anyone with a desire to discover God's vision for this world. Next slide. So who are the speakers? Is this like some academic course where you know we sit down and just take notes? No, Vision School is not an academic, theological, like head knowledge type of course, but we have missionaries that come every single week from Egypt, from Turkey, from Lebanon, from uh, Iraq, and they share about the spiritual conditions of these nations, but they also share about the topics that we were just speaking of. And these missionaries are from a variety of uh, backgrounds, Europeans, Afri- uh, Africans, we haven't had, yeah, okay, Africans, yes, and um, Asians, and so, so many backgrounds of so many different age, uh, ages, and it will surprise you who God is raising up in these times to obey his word, amen? Next slide. And so when and where will, uh, is vision school? So vision school, this term is seven weeks. It will be once a week. And so I, when speaking with Pastor Craig, he said the best day for 
the church, BCC, all members of the church. Uh, the day that's free is a Tuesday. So we will actually have Vision School here on a Tuesday beginning the, on the 4th of October. The Vision School fee is 120 euro for all of those days. What does this fee cover? This fee covers basically the flights of all the speakers that are coming in to this country from the, the different nations. And on week five, an important note is that there will be a vision camp, meaning um, the UK and Ireland vision school students will actually gather together to uh, hear about God's heart for um, un, a mission and a mission to the unreached unreach nations. And so this is really important to attend. This will be happening in November. And so, um, yeah, I think this is pretty much it for now. I really want to encourage anyone who has a uh, desire or who has a thought that, Lord, I want to explore your heart for the Great Commission. You've called me to be obedient. I want to be obedient. Please come to us. We have registration forms, because this is not the first time we, we've been here, right? We have registration forms, and we really want to see um, people register even today in faith, in faith, amen? And so if you have any questions, please feel free to approach us after the service. We want to talk to like everyone. We will hang around. And then, um, yeah, we really hope to see Vision School at Bali Fermat Community Church this October. Amen. Amen. Just one question, please. Uh, is, is it in the evening time? It is in the evening time. It's at 6.30, yes. And the camp, is the camp here or is it somewhere else? It's in Coventry in the UK. So Ireland will actually be going to Coventry, meaning so there's not only this vision school here in Valley Fermit, there's other um, churches and individuals taking vision school in Ireland and so all together we'll go. And uh, we were looking up the flights and they're 33 euro at that time. So it's not very, and they, they will cover a lot of the costs for the vision school. So just that fee, 120 and then the flights. Right, yeah. thanks. Okay, I'm doing the... A few announcements, but um, seeing as we had Noel Floodgate talking about when God opened the, f the physical floodgates of heaven and rained down rain, it's the same name, but <laughs> same form. <laughs> that uh, sometimes uh, you'll have to be patient with me now because I like, I like this kind of topic is that is there actual evidence for the physical flood? And there, there's massive amounts of evidence for the flood. There's, there's absolutely massive, huge square miles or square kilometers going on for ages and ages of, of sedimentary layers. And sedimentary layers are laid down by water. They're laid down in water and by water. And they're, they're graded. Normally they're graded. And also many of these sedimentary la layers, I don't know if you've ever noticed, if you've ever gone to places where rocks are exposed, and sometimes the layers are gone like this. They're like waves. They were laid flat, but now they're like this. And that means they were, and they're not, they're not shattered or anything. They're actually, uni you know, they're uniform. They're in order. And that means that they were, they were bent while they were soft, just shortly after they were laid down probably, within a matter of weeks or months as we see about the, read about the flood, how long it lasted. And also we presume at that time, that's when the continents were formed. That's, there was one land mass evidently, uh, which uh, science kind of agrees with. And then it split up and uh, it was pushed out by the waters. If you like, there was water under the continents um, and it was pushed out. There's actually lines of uh, mountains going down the middle of the Pacific and the, roughly the middle of the Atlantic oceans, which is probably where the split occurred, where the waters came up from the deep, more than likely. That's speculation. But I also want to mention the theory of evolution, if anyone here is interested in it, is that there's no actual scientific evidence, hard evidence for the theory of evolution. There's none, it just doesn't exist. Uh, I've read a fair bit on it as a lay person, you know. But there's also, there's an organization called, for example, one organization called uh, Creation Ministries International. As far as I can remember, they're based in England and they have scientists working there, PhD and all that kind of thing, and whatever degrees they have. And they're all Bible-believing Christians and yet there are scientists that are making discoveries. Science actually grew out of Christianity historically uh, because Christians knew there was order in the universe, there was order, God had put order into creation, so they looked for it. They looked for the order and they made great discoveries. And uh, for example, the, I was in Armagh Observatory there on uh, Thursday. We were, I was up to North with my wife and we had a few days off and um, that was founded over 200 years ago by an archbishop the local archbishop up there founded it, you know, and it's been, it's been gathering records on climate change since then, you know, on climate uh, rainfall and all that kind of stuff since that time. So it's very old observatory. It's still working, it's still, in a, it's still having, um, they're still at the forefront of uh, investigation scientific subjects because they're Christians, you know, or not, not saying they're Christians, but because Christianity tells us that we're created, there's order. And also another, I want to mention one more thing in case someone is interested, is that this thing of irreducible complexity that there's certain things in us, like the cells, there's little molecular machines in the cells. 
But if you try to reduce it down to something that it might have evolved from, it just doesn't work. It's like the genetic code doesn't work unless it's a full code. Now it's been damaged since the fall, so we have damage in it. But the genetic code only works when it's a full code. It doesn't work if it's evolving, and it just doesn't. It's, it's, it's kind of, um, I would say, in my opinion, it's nonsensical. But there's a fierce amount of uh, speculation, papers, theses, all that kind of thing, agreeing with evolution, because it's actually a type of religious belief. We talked about there about um, the end times, the deceptions that Satan brings in, I can mention. That's one of them. And it's been here around for a couple of hundred years. Also, the fossil record that they base a lot of their hopes on has, has never shown any signs of evolution. Or maybe they pick out a few signs, but there's no hard evidence of evolution in the fossil record. It just doesn't exist, in my opinion, anyway. And the opinion of some scientists who studied it. So now the announcements. Thanks for been patient because <laughs> I know some people are too interested in that kind of thing but I am so um first of all starting at the, the beginning at the beginning of the week Sunday is the first day of the week as, as uh, scripturally so we have our service here at half 11 we have 10 o'clock 10 a.m we have prayer in the usually in the manor shop out there we go in the back way and a group is meet for prayer to pray for the service and that and that's at 10 a.m Tuesdays then the ladies meet here at 11 for a, a women's bible study usually led, facilitated by Nora and by, um, what's the other, uh, two, two people anyway, facilitated. Then at 12 o'clock, that becomes, opens to intercession for anyone to can attend then from 10. So the first part is for women and the second part is for anyone to attend for intercession. And the women from the shop who work in the shop here, they always bring over their prayer requests because they get answers, the ad prayers get answered, you know? And they've had the evidence of it, yeah. Some of them, as you say, we don't, some of them are, we don't know. Uh, so that's on Tuesdays. Wednesdays then we have the 8 p.m. Zoom, Bible study on Zoom, 8 p.m. And uh, this week it'll be Acts chapter 13. Uh, Thursday then we have the Holy Spirit night starting back this coming Thursday. Uh, we usually have a, have a good few people coming to that, please God. You know, it drops down, it drops down at some times, but that's on Thursday at 8 p.m. Um, then the youth, Great Commission youth, we know what the Great Commission is to go forth and bring the gospel with us, live the gospel. That's at 7 p.m. on Fridays, and it's for uh, basically secondary school age here, you know what I mean, uh, about approximately 12 to 18. Uh, then um, there's information cards outside if you want to fill one in. If you're not on the WhatsApp group, we have a WhatsApp announcement group that gives out announcements. There's also another WhatsApp group that kind of has chat on it, and people put up stuff, so you can be on both of them or just one of them. Uh, the just the announcement one, maybe, if you want to be on that. Also, what's, what's your first name again? Gertie is the other lady that <laughs> facilitates the, the intercession on Tuesday. So that's it. Thanks very much for coming, for attending. And thank you, Lord, for uh, Noel and for everyone who participated. I want to thank especially the worship group, Victor and uh, the twins, Peace and Love, and the two boys, Harmony and Melody. Sorry, thank you. Amen. And the Lord bless you all.